Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the latest of our midweek messages from St John's Church, one of many ways in which we're just trying to stay in touch and stay connected with people as lockdown continues and as our nation continues to, to work through this unusual and unpleasant time that we're going through. But a really warm welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Hope you're doing okay. Um, I'm doing okay. And one of the reasons I'm okay is that I've just had a few days off after Easter, probably like a lot of vicars around the country. I took a few days off and it was just good to have a bit of a break. But it was a very different kind of holiday to the one we might usually have. Often we'd go away um, and, and get away from Weymouth and, and just be in different places for a holiday. Or at least we might go round and enjoy some of the lovely parts of Dorset on day trips. But of course this year our holiday just meant not going online, which was really good. And um, doing a few jobs around the house and being in the garden and being with the family. And so no complaints. It was a really, really good time. And actually feeling quite refreshed having had some good time with the family, spent some good time with God and just taken a bit of a breather and taken stock a little bit after quite a crazy few weeks. Hope you've had a chance to have a bit of a break and a breather as well. There was an unusual experience this holiday though, and it's that time seemed to pass in a different way to normal. And here's how I experienced it. Every day seemed to go really, really slowly. And that's maybe because the days were very similar and we weren't out and about doing different things. But I found myself each day, almost kind of Groundhog Day, like just thinking, oh, wow, we're, we're only at this point of the day. And the day was dragging a bit. And, you know, we have small children and they can contribute to a little bit of that at times as well. Bless them. Um, but by the end of the week, I couldn't believe how quickly the week had gone. So the days went slowly and the week went quickly. I've no way to explain that, really, apart from just to say that time, like everything else at the moment, just feels odd and unusual. Uh, here's a little bit of basic Greek for you, and I, I'm not a Greek scholar. I didn't manage to, to finish more than a module of Greek when I was at vicar school. But the New Testament Greek uses two words for time. Uh, one is chronos, or it might be chronos. Someone can probably tell me. One is chronos, and one is kairos. And in our English Bibles, we just read the word time, but the Greek will have either used chronos or kairos. Now, now chronos is where we get the word chronology from, and chronos just refers to the time of day, the kind of sequential orderly time that we get used to. If you look at your watch now, what you'll see is the chronos. And at the time as I'm doing this, it's well, it feels like it's about lunchtime, but I think it's about 11.45 as I do this. That's the chronos. It's the time of day. It's descriptive. Kairos is something quite different. And the New Testament at times uses the word kairos for time. Kairos doesn't refer to what's on your watch. It refers to moments in time, moments in history, opportune, poignant moments. And in the Bible, kairos moments tend to involve two things. First, they involve divine activity, that God is going to or is doing something. And secondly, they involve human opportunity. There's an opportunity for us to respond to what God's doing. So where we get a kairos moment, they're moments where God is at work and we are invited to respond to him. There's a really clear example of this at the start of Mark's gospel. You might know that the very first words that are on Jesus's lips in Mark's gospel are in a, is an announcement of the time. He begins his ministry by announcing the time. He says this in Mark chapter one, verse 15. He says, the time has come. His first words in Mark's gospel, the time has come. He's not talking about the chronos. He's not talking about what time it is in the day. He's talking about kairos. Kairos has come. He says the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. A Kairos moment as Jesus begins his ministry. Divine action. God has come to his people. In Christ, God is near. And that activity invites an invitation. And it's to repent and it's to believe. If I can paraphrase that verse for a moment, we might say that Jesus is here. Turn to him and trust him. That's how he announces all that he's about to do and say. 
in Mark's Gospel. This is a Kairos moment. The time is here. God is at work. You can respond to him. Jesus is here. Turn to him and trust him. Well, we're in a Kairos moment, I believe, at the moment. The time that we, we are living in. This is a time that we will remember for many, many years. This is a time that we'll tell our children about and our children will tell their children about. People will recall and reminisce about how we coped and how we responded during 2020 and the coronavirus and all that it meant. And we as a family certainly want our children to be able to share good memories alongside the difficult ones of this time. But this is Kairos. This is a Kairos moment. It, it's a pivotal moment, maybe, in our own personal and national and even international history. And so in scripture, a Kairos moment is where God is at work and we have an opportunity to respond. And I believe God is at work in this Kairos moment, in this time that we're experiencing. As I've said before, and I hope I've said clearly, I don't believe God sends coronavirus. I don't think this is his work. It's the consequence of the fallenness of the world that we live in. But I do believe that he's at work within it, creatively and lovingly, and working all things together for the good of those who love him. That's what he promises to us. So I believe that God is at work. There is divine action going on in this moment. One day we'll see more clearly what that was, what God was doing, but we can trust that he is at work. But you know, he also responds, invites us to respond to him. That's the second part, remember, of that Kairos moment. God is at work and we're invited to respond. And over these weeks, I want to use these opportunities more and more to share about how I'm trying to respond to, to God and how we can and what it means for us. And, and, and I guess I'd just start simply because there's loads I'd love to say, but I'm just going to keep it short and simple for today, is that actually for me, the number one thing that God is using this Kairos moment to do is to challenge me about my chronos. So God is using this time in history to challenge me about how I use my time. So the Kairos is challenging my chronos, my chronos, if it's OK to say that. And really, it's just been about the basics. And I needed the time of last week just to stop and to think and to be with God and to hear his voice. And this crisis that we're going through has highlighted for me, maybe for, for others, what our priorities are and should be and how we're using our time, what we're filling it with, what we're not filling it with. And for me, this has just been an opportunity to respond to God by going back to the basics, the basics of when I first became a Christian and what just felt so natural, which was to spend time in God's presence, to rest in his presence, to, to dwell, to almost waste time with him. But it's never wasted when with with him to pray, but to pray deeply, not to pray in that kind of hurried way where we quickly need an answer before we go to the next thing, but to be in his presence, to listen to him, to engage with scripture to get the Bible open. And, and I confess to you that sometimes I use the Bible too professionally. I, I'm treating it like a, a preaching vending machine. I'll open it up, see if I can get a sermon out for Sunday and then thank God for it. And of course we can teach from God's word, we're meant to. But actually for me, just to be in scripture, allowing it to shape me, loving it, falling in love with it all over again. And I'm at the beginnings of just rediscovering some of the beauty of what it is to be in God's presence, to be praying more deeply in an unhurried way, which even in lockdown is a challenge in our house, certainly, and to be engaging with his word. So God's using this time in history to challenge me about how I use my time. And I hope I emerge the other side with a, a, a very different approach and a very different way of being with God and prioritising him and prioritising prioritizing. Susie and the children and, and, and being closer to the person that I believe God is calling me to be. And so I challenge you as well to say, what's God using this time, this Kairos moment to do in your life? What's he saying to you at the moment? What's he putting on your heart? What's he highlighting for you that's just gone wrong? Maybe it's a lifestyle thing. Maybe it's about how you use your time. And maybe something's just out of kilter and God wants to realign you in this moment with his purposes. That's what I feel he's doing for me and for our family and for our church. And as I've said, over these coming weeks, let's think through what it means for us 
to make the most of this opportunity. And it starts with using our time to be with God. And from there, from that wellspring, so much can transform, so much can change. But for me and for you, for all of us, I'd, I'd suggest it starts with being with Jesus in an unhurried way, enjoying his presence. The psalmist, someone who wrote words many, many years ago, said better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Yet we get caught up so often with all the busyness of life. So, uh, friends, be close to God at this time. We'll talk more in the coming weeks about really how all this looks and what it means for the church as well. But use this Kairos moment to be with God, to hear his invitation, to draw near. And maybe just hear again the way he opens and describes his own ministry. The time has come. God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are near. You've drawn so close to us and you invite us to draw so close to you. Lord, help us to use our time well in this moment in time that we find ourselves, to draw near to you, to be with you, to hear your voice. Lord, that we might be renewed and transformed as we do those things. And not only us, but those around us and our whole community, our whole nation, our whole world. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your presence with us. We pray your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for sticking with it. I think I've gone off on one a little bit there, but I'm passionate about what God's doing in my life at the moment. I'm excited by what he's doing, and I pray you'll be excited about what he's doing in your life too. So until next time, God bless, and we'll stay in touch in the various ways we are doing, and we do hope and pray that you are staying well and staying safe. See you again soon.